Salvete discipuli. In today's lesson, we will learn more about why Juno hates the Trojans and Aeneas in particular. It has everything to do with the fact that she knows it has been fated that if Aeneas reaches Italy, he will found a kingdom that will set in motion the eventual destruction of her favorite city in the world, Carthage. Urbs antiqua fuit, tirii tenuere coloni. Now, I'm going to show you at times as we're like unpacking uh, Virgil, I'm going to show you kind of what the Latin means, but then construct it into better English. So the words, urbs antiqua, ancient city, fuit is the perfect tense of the verb to be. So like erat, it just means was. The distinction between erat and fuit, generally speaking, is fuit is was in the sense of something that's truly done okay so this city is gone okay there was an ancient city there's not any more that's the understanding tyrii coloni tyrian colonists okay now these two words go together but in poetry for the purpose of meter frequently words aren't right next to each other when they go together we're going to see an even ex more extreme example of that in a moment now the verb here tenuere looks like an infinitive doesn't it but it's not an infinitive get ready to meet an important new form i'm translating this as just they held understood it the city and I'm translating it as a perfect tense verb because, believe it or not, that's what it is, okay? This is known as the poetic alternative third person plural perfect tense form, okay? So even though tenuere looks like an infinitive, it's not an infinitive. Ten, uh, tenere is the infinitive of this verb, okay? And the, the, the you there tells you that this is the perfect stem, okay? The regular version of this would have been tenuerunt, they held. The reason there is this form at all is, keep in mind, um, the two consonant rule here is going to make this vowel be long, whereas this vowel is short, and that allows the poet to drop a third person poetic alternative form in places of the dactylic hexameter that the regular form could not have fit. Okay, so again, how do we form this thing? You start with the perfect stem. The perfect stem is you take the third principal part, you remove the I, and you have whatever is left over, in this case, spectau. You then add this ere ending to it, and that is the poetic alternative third person plural ending. Okay, so spectauere, they watched. Spectauerunt would have been the normal form. Okay, so let's have you form one. If the verb audire means to hear, to form this, you're going to want to go again to the third principal part, remove the I, and whatever you have left, you're going to add the ere ending, and you arrive at that. How would you then translate this? You would translate it as they heard. Okay, moving on. Cartago, Italiam contra Tibernina que longe ostia. Dives opum studiisque asperima belli. Okay, so the, the urbs antiqua is Carthage. Okay, Carthage is described here as Italiam contra, opposite Italy. Now, this preposition, which takes an accusative, would ordinarily come before the word it describes, okay? Just like, you know, prope willam, you know, near the house. You would have had it, would, it should have been contra Italian. But because of the flexibility of word order in poetry, look what Virgil has done here. He has literally juxtaposed Carthage and Italy next to each other as a way with word order to further emphasize the meaning that Carthage is opposite Italy. Now, what else is Carthage? And it's one other thing he's going to tell us about here geographically. It is longe. It is far away from. What is it far away from? It's far away from Tibernina Ostia the Tiberian river mouths. That is to say that, you know, the, when you go to Italy, the Tiber River flows into um, the Mediterranean Sea at a spot where there's a river mouth, okay? But notice now, 
He emphasizes the fact that it is long gay, it is far away from those. In the line, Carthage is literally far away from Ostia here um, by being actually completely in separate lines. Okay, he has more to tell us about Carthage. Carthage is de ways opum. It is rich of wealth. Okay, so this is actually the genitive plural, okay, rich of wealth. Um, it is also asperima. It is very harsh. What is it harsh in? It's harsh studies in the studies. The studies of what? Here's our genitive singular, what it's harsh in the studies of. Harsh in the studies of war. Okay, moving on. Quam you know fertur teris magis omnibus unam post habita coluisse samo. Okay, this, this is going to be a little tricky grammatically, uh, more so than, than the other uh, passage we just looked at. So... Um, keep in mind, some of this is not going to make sense until we get all of the pieces together. So just follow along as I kind of explain the pieces. And then at the end of all this, I'll be able to tell you what all this means. Okay, so quam is referring back to the city, which, which one. Okay, so believe it or not, check this out. Quam and Unam go together and they are on opposite sides of the line. Now, fertur literally means is brought. Okay, it's from the verb ferro to bring, and the tour ending here is the passive ending. Now, because historically you could have said news is brought, and then you would, but you could drop the word news, you could just say it's brought that something, this kind of evolves into being alongside continuing to mean to bring, to mean to say, okay? So that's how we are translating this verb, which again, literally is brought. We're translating it as which one Juno is said, okay? So again, referring to the city, Juno is said. Now, we're going to be going, because this is now an indirect statement, we're going to be going to our verb, which is in the next line, okay? So what is coluisse? The verb colo, colere, colui means to cherish. That form is the perfect tense infinitive that we have studied. The isse ending is the distinctive ending of the perfect tense infinitive. How do we form it? Well, you go to the third principal part, you remove the I, which is the like the I form. So kolui means I cherished something. You add the isse ending and you have the perfect tense infinitive. So let's do another one here. Fakey I made. Okay, the verb means to make. So fakisse means to have made. Okay, so now if we wanted to form one completely, drop the I, add isse, dixisse, to have said. Okay, so, but going back to the city, which one Juno is said to have cherished? Okay, coluisse. Um, and what, how is she said to have cherished it? Magus. Magus more, more than all other lands. Teres and omnibus are ablative plurals. You can use ablative for comparison, okay? So if you say he likes uh, one thing more than something else, okay? There's two ways to say more than. You can use the word quam, which means than, okay? Now this is a different quam altogether. This is the accusative singular feminine relative pronoun quam, okay? But there's a word quam, which means than. So you can say magus quam, and it means more than. Another thing you can do instead of quam is you just use the ablative all on its own. So magis teris omnibus would be more than all lands. But in poetry, of course, we can mix up the word order to make it match our dactylic hexameter meter. Okay. So again, so which one city understood? Juno is said to have cherished more than all lands. Now, Post habita samo literally means samo had after, okay? Post means after, 
Verb habeo, you know, habet, uh, he, she, or it has. Habita is the past participle. So samo had after. Um, this is basically kind of a fiction Virgil is creating. Everybody but everybody knows that Samo is Juno's favorite city in the world. Okay, so we start with that knowledge. Virgil is going to set up the fact that Juno loves Carthage even more than Samo. Okay, you thought she loved Samo. Well, guess what? She loves Carthage even more. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, so that's kind of the he's creating the the literary tension here of why Juno hates Aeneas because Aeneas is eventually going to travel to Italy. He's going to found a kingdom. It's going to set in motion. Um, events that will lead eventually to the founding of Rome by Romulus. Rome will eventually destroy Carthage, and since Juno knows all of this is fated, she hates this all the way back to the start of it, and that is Aeneas himself. Okay, now he, tell, he tells us more about Carthage. Hic Ilius Arma, hic Currus Fuit. Okay, here were the arms of that one. Arms here means weapons, okay? So hic here, arma is the plural, the arms. Ilius is the genitive singular of this um, demonstrative uh, adjective that means that. So of that one. Now that one is Juno, okay? And also here understood was her chariot, okay? Now, what, what, is, what is Virgil talking about? That Juno's like weapons and chariot were in Carthage? Um, there were known in ancient times some artifacts uh, that people thought like belonged to the gods or to like giants that once roamed the earth. It's not impossible, by the way, that peoples in the ancient world had actually managed to excavate things from earlier generations. We know, for instance, that humans generally lost height uh, when we reached the agricultural revolution. Um, people who were living on a hunter-gatherer diet grew to a taller height than when we started to eat primarily grain. So it's not impossible, for instance, that someone like dug up a sword, which was like from before the agricultural revolution. And they realized this thing's like bigger than we tend to make them today. This must have belonged to a giant or something. Hoc regnum dea gentibus esse, si qua fata sinant iam tum tenditque fowetque. Okay. The goddess already then. You'll notice I'm translating Dea here, and I'm running all the way down here to pick up Yam and Tum. Now, these words don't mean a lot, you know, already then. And the fact is, Virgil's just throwing them in because of the, the need to have syllables meet the meter. Okay, so what is the goddess already then doing for Carthage? Tenditque fowetque. Nurtures and cherishes, okay? So she nurtures, tend it, and she cherishes, fowet. She cherishes this understood city, hoke, okay? And she cherishes it, esse, esse. To be what? To be a kingdom, regnum, okay? So she, the goddess then already, uh, cherishes this city to be a kingdom. To be a kingdom for what? Gentibus, a kingdom for the nation. So Juno, you see, she has a plan to make Carthage into what we know Rome is eventually going to be. Okay, Rome is going to be the kingdom for the nations. She's hoping that with her help, Carthage is going to be that. Now, she knows that's not true. She knows something else is fated to happen. And curiously, even though she knows the future, she knows she can't change it, she still has the ability to have hard feelings about it and make Aeneas's life miserable in the process. Okay, And here's the reality, despite everything she wants. Si qua fata si not. If in any way the fates allow. So fata is the fates. The verb sinant means to allow. So again, plural ending because the fates allow. Now, the word qua, okay, this is a weird point of Latin grammar. So listen to this weird point. 
following the word C, which means if, okay, if you have a form of the adjective aliquis or aliquid, okay, the A-L-I part drops away. So again, aliqua would mean like in any way, okay, aliqua, in any way. But if you say si aliqua, you drop the ali, okay? So you throw away the ali and you read si qua as if it were si aliqua, if in any way the fates allow it. So again, we know this is not going to happen. Progeniem said enim Troiano a sanguine duci audierat Tirias olim quae verteret arces. Okay, but for, again, um, said means but, and it means for. Um, again, doesn't mean a lot, but uh, it's, it's in there for poetry. The main verb, audierat. Okay, this is a pluperfect tense verb. Um, you would have expected a V to be right here, audierat. Okay, um, there, alternatively, sometimes you do or do not have the V in some of these forms. Um, the past tense of the verb to go, for instance, is attested as either it, it or iwit. Okay, they both exist. So the lack of the V here isn't a big deal. This is a pluperfect tense verb, audiwerat, for she had heard. Now, what's interesting, what she had heard is referring to the future. We're going to be hearing about the fact she had heard that what is actually fated to happen is that something's going to arise from Trojan blood. Okay, so she had heard that, we're going to have an indirect statement here, she had heard that a progeny, meaning like a child, a child, duki, okay, to be led. So dukere, to lead. Duki is the passive infinitive. So she had heard that a child or a progeny to be led. Okay, so we're going to translate it as like would arise. Okay, she had heard that a progeny would arise from a, uh, the preposition a uh, means from, what would it arise from? Troiano sanguine, from Trojan blood. We're talking about the fact that eventually descended from Aeneas are going to be the Romans themselves, okay? This word order here, by the way, this is actually normal word order. So um, when you have a preposition describing a noun, it's normal to have an adjective come before the preposition, you know? So same thing like with summa cum laude, with highest praise. Which once, quae, okay, so talking about um, this progeny, which olim once, usually olim's talking about something in the past, you know, like olim's could be translated once upon a time, okay? In this case, once is referring to an event in the future. What will this progeny do? Which once, werteret, it would overturn. Okay, what's it going to overturn? Well, the only thing left in the sentence is Tyrias Arces. It would overturn Tyrian citadels. Now, the reason Virgil keeps calling the Trojans Tyrians is Tyre is a city on the coast of the Mediterranean um, at modern day Lebanon. Okay, so Tyre and his neighboring city Sidon. You hear them like Tyre and Sidon frequently called. This is where the, the, um, the Phoenicians originally came from. Dido was herself a refugee from the Phoenician peoples there. So she's a refugee from Tyre who comes and eventually founds the kingdom of Carthage. And so you can continue to call people by like their ancestral name even after you, you know, they move somewhere else. So what, what, of course, the Romans are destined to eventually overturn are Carthaginian citadels. But since the Carthaginians came from the Tyrians, you can call their citadels also Tyrian citadels. Hinc populum late regem belloque superbum venturum excidio libiae sic volvere parcas. Okay, 
Um, this is the last bit we're going to study in this video. It is also grammatically a little confusing. Okay, so hink means hence or from here, meaning from uh, from Rome. Okay, again, she had heard that. Populum, a people. What are the people? We need a verb. Okay, now they are described as latte regem. Okay, latte means widely. It's an adverb. Regem is the noun that means king. So a people widely king. Okay, this is just seen as poetically a way to say that they are going to be like in power in a wide geographical fashion. Okay, so to call a people widely king would be like a poetic way of saying a people who will rule widely. Okay. Widely ruling is how I'll render this. Even though, again, be aware, regem means king. Okay. The people are also described as superbum, proud. What are they proud in? Bello. They're proud in war. Okay. Here's our verb finally. Venturum is the future participle from the verb venire to come. So venturum is that they would come or they're about to come. Okay. So venturum is describing the populum. So hence or from here she had heard that a people widely ruling and proud in war would come. What would they come for? Excidio. For the destruction. Okay, so this is a dative singular. They would come for the destruction. The destruction of what? Libyae. The destruction of Libya. Genitive singular. Okay, so remember, Juno had hoped that maybe this would be the Carthaginians. Okay, si qua fata si, not if in any way the fates allow it. Now we learn that the Romans are the ones who are going to do all this. Seek. Volvere parcas. Parcas is a synonym of the fates. So, thus the fates have predestined. Now, this literally again just means to roll. Okay. Um, so, thus the fates have predestined. So, this is why Juno hates the Romans uh, in the future because of what they're going to do to her uh, beloved Carthaginians. She hates Aeneas because he has a crucial role in it eventually all happening.